10.39 KOA time, and we're, I'm still trying to piece information together. Um, off the air, I'm finding out that Channel 7 has issued a report that said the best um, investigative efforts of the DPD has indicated that someone passing in a vehicle using a semi-automatic weapon or an automatic weapon, I'm not sure which, fired upon Allen Berg when he was exiting his vehicle in front of his home. Um, ten or more shell casings to the best of my ability or uh, a number that would indicate an automatic weapon was found in the at the scene and Allen Berg has in fact passed on he is no longer with us he'll always be with us though I think he's touched each and touched each and every one of us he touched me and <coughs> Um, and Lee Larson and Jim Hawthorne are on their way into the station now. And Jim is program director. Lee, uh, Lee Larson is the station manager. And it's a, it's a shock. It's uh, to describe how I feel right now. My I've got a high pitched ringing sound in my ears. My head is throbbing, and I can't believe it. I can't believe the degree in my classically liberal heart, the degree of hatred, the degree of venomous hatred that we feed and we nourish and we water, we make sure it gets enough sunlight, we harvest it package it and we hide it away for stormy days so that we'll always have enough hatred to munch on. Alan Berg was a purveyor of words. Alan Berg was a purveyor of ideas. You can't kill words and you can't kill ideas. Funny thing, Alan always, you know, it's funny. I tell you, we used to sit down at lunch, and Alan always used to say, they're out there, but you can't worry about them. They're out there. You can't worry about them. You, you never know, you know, you never know where the nuts are going to come from is what he used to say. So you live from day to day. Everybody's at the scene right now, and as soon as we can get an update on what has occurred, we'll pass it along to you. It's 10.42 on a very, very, very blue evening. Hi, you're on KOA. Go ahead. You're Hello? on the air. Go ahead. I'm so sorry for your grief. Um, I it's, I find it so hard to believe that that he's really gone. Uh, I used to live by him, and I got to know him a little bit, and I just I find it so hard to believe. I just ooh, it just really hit me hard when I heard about it, and I just wanted to let you know that. I feel for you. I kind of feel a little bit what you're feeling. Thank you. Thank you. You see, I, would, I want to tell you about the limited time we spent together. I said we had some cat fights, and we did. Damn it, we used to go round and round about Berg cigarette smoking. And I used to work the midnight to five in the morning shift, and twice a week, he'd start damn trash fires. And I fought with Berg because I could not believe that someone, an adult, could be as legitimately inept as he was I couldn't believe it 
The man couldn't, he couldn't open a can of beans with a manual can opener. He thought I was from another planet. He thought I was crazy when I would talk to him about obligation. Where you got an obligation not to burn the damn place down? Stop dropping cigarette butts in the cellophane lined trash basket. Then we went up to Vale. Hell, nobody knew what was going to happen. We came out of there good friends. <laughs> Boy, he bitched about the fact that that I had the bigger room. He did. He got a chance to pick the rooms. We were at the Avon Center. He got a chance to pick the room, and I got, a, I got the last choice, right? Which do you want, Mr. Berg? You want apartment A or apartment B? Well, Berg took A, hell. We were there two days before he came over to my place. It was just in a foyer, and then you had his apartment straight in, and mine was on the right-hand side. And he walked into the room. <laughs> I thought he was going to faint. I walked into his room, and I almost did faint. He had the closet. I'm very, very, very angry. It's a violent world. Violent people, sick people. I always said we needed a good national health program in this country, a good mental health program. I, you know... I guess I'm babbling. I guess I'm sitting here and babbling. I don't know. We'll get you some first-hand information as it comes up. And those of you that have your TV sets, I'm sure you'll get additional information from that. A moment ago, I was touching on a concept, whether you can kill ideas, whether you can kill thoughts. Somebody tonight, somebody out there, I, can, I know, I can, I can feel your presence. I can feel your presence listening to KOA to feel the result of your handiwork. You're a loser, man. You're a loser. Talk show host or a dime a dozen. If Alan Berg was anything before you blew him away, he was nothing. And you made him immortal. You made him a part of me. And you gave value to everything that ever justified your sick act tonight. It's 1048 in the evening. I'm Ken Hamblin. I've got ID in my pocket, and I've got a clock in front of me, and that's about all I can tell you right now. You're on KOA. Go ahead. Ken. Hi. Hi. You know who this is. Yeah. And, um, yeah. I just wanted to say that I guess now it's kind of turned around where I'm standing with you, because you stood with me in a hard time, too. Even though you don't really know, but you did a lot to comfort me in my time. And I was going to say something about the trash can fires, and of course you mentioned those, but mm -hmm. I, I was hit just as hard as you were, and believe me, I know exactly what you feel like. The total shock, and I just pray for everybody down there, including you. Thank you, okay? Okay, and, and, I know it's a, just a babble and an ID and a clock, and it's going to be that way for a long time, but I'll tell you, I got half my family hooked on this radio station, not just you and not just Alan Burt, but, you know, you two were the main people. And uh, even though Alan is gone now, you are always going to hear his voice in your head and everything he said and did for a very long time to come. And I know I get so mad at people out there. And I think I'm a little upset right now, too, because this just wasn't a natural thing. 
Okay. Uh, that's it. Thanks a lot. Good okay. Luck. Good luck. Okay. Uh, Ken, we have some more information on tonight's unbelievable story. Uh, the latest right now, KOA's Paul McGregor is out at the scene, and he'll be getting back to us on the details. But what is sketchy so far, uh, evidently police report that beside the body tonight they found ten spent rounds of forty-five caliber ammunition lying on the sidewalk next to the body. Uh, it is speculated that uh, that may possibly indicate the use of an automatic weapon. That's, again, speculation. However, that seems to be uh, some of the talk right now, again, because of the found spent forty five caliber ammunition. Ten rounds were found on the sidewalk. Uh, we got this report at about 10 o'clock tonight, and uh, so far the details are sketchy. However, it happened at the 1400 block of Adams Street in uh, East Capitol Hill here in downtown Denver. And uh, right now, again, as I say, KOA's Paul McGregor is on the scene. He will he will be getting back to us with some of the details of what did happen tonight. However, Denver police have confirmed that longtime KOA radio talk show host Alan Berg was shot and killed tonight in downtown Denver. Thank you, Rick. Thank you very much. Um, when, I, <clears throat> when I came to KOA, one of the breaks that I got was Alan going off to Israel and after we became friends in Vail, he said, you know, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I never thanked you for doing that for me. All right, what am I going to thank you for? You probably wish the airplane crashed. No, I, I didn't wish the airplane crashed. I didn't wish that at all. Um, Alan was um, a funny kind of person not funny funny as you knew him on the air but he's miserable in many ways we used to talk about that a lot we used to sit there at Besant's and he would say to me are you happy you give me a scale of 1 to 10 how if, if, how often are you happy 50% of the time 75% of the time I said Alan let me tell you something I'm probably happy about 50% of the time. And he said, consider yourself lucky. It was funny how this conversation came about because... It, no, as a matter of fact, I apologize. I guess it's all running together now because we weren't sitting in at Besant's. We were sitting in Vail, 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 Vail. Everything centers around Vail. Because before Vail, I couldn't believe him, and after Vail, we were tight friends, for those of you that were not perhaps familiar with the vernacular of the streets. He used to sit there with a cigarette down by his um, and it's funny what you remember about a person after we started becoming tight you say what you mean? you're the only person that makes me uncomfortable with my cigarettes and he used to hold the cigarette under the table you ever notice what happens to a cigarette when you hold it under the table a cigarette that was only dispensing smoke in a vertical position is now dispensing smoke all around the table in a vertical position but it was his effort. What was I going to do? Tell him, huh? That you were more efficient trying to break your habit? No. Oh, boy. You are on KOA. Hi. Uh, good evening, Mr. Hamlin. Tonight, that news just shocked me. I could not believe what I heard. I can't believe how low people will, how low people will go. Tonight, 
what that person did is unexcusable. The anger and the rage in me for that person that did that thing to Mr. Berg. Yeah. Oh, it's it's hard to to explain it. I know how you feel. Thanks for calling. Okay. 10:55 KOA time. And um, we do have Paul McGregor at the scene as soon as we get some accurate information, the details, the stuff to go into the report. Oh, yeah. Alan always talked about violence, and he always talked about how he didn't subscribe to it, and he always talked about how it was futile to protect yourself. We used to, it's, it's, you know, the amazing thing is we used to do shows. The, the last time I was on Alan's show, he invited me as a guest in the afternoon and talked about radio. God, I remember he treated me like garbage when I first started. I mean, I was all hot to meet Alan Berg. You know, it was my first radio job. This is it. And Alan Berg just, you know, he iced me. I guess he felt I had to win my spurs, and I did. Thank you. I listened to him, and I listened to Peter Boyles, and I would think, and I would polish it. And then we started talking, and he would say things like, hey, good show, this and that. I think of the nights that I would defend Alan against those people that would say he was racist or sexist or some such thing. not going to be with us in the morning. I guess that's... I wish this were a misguided broadcast of Austin Wells' War of the Worlds. Because then it would be a big hoax. And at five, whatever time the sun is due to come up tomorrow morning, as the shadows pull back, and the buildings downtown begin to reflect back that golden light, we'd be all able to say, April Fool, but it's not even April. It's tonight. And I feel as though every black thing I ever predicted, every injustice I knew we were capable of, one more time, it's been proven to me. It's always proven to me. When I said that man is intrinsically evil and good is impressed upon him, I'm told, I was told that I was too cynical. I'm still cynical and I've got one less friend. And that hurts. That hurts a great deal. We're going to pause to bring you the world in a few moments. We're going to bring you CBS News. They're going to tell you how wonderful everything is. Wouldn't you like that? Wouldn't you like to play Lollipop Land? I've never lied to you. And when this passes, I won't lie to you then either. There'll be something missing. There'll be a chip. I'll be a little bit more cynical. Your lives will go on tomorrow, and mine will go on tomorrow. It'll pass into history. We'll continue here at KOA right after this. It's 10.59 at KOA News Talk 85. I'm Rick Barber. KOA morning talk show host Alan Berg reportedly was shot and killed tonight in downtown Denver. Details of that shooting, which happened around 10 tonight, are sketchy. 
However, Denver police have identified the victim as Alan Berg. In other news, Colorado emergency officials say that flood damage in western Colorado from this spring's runoff is going to run at least $8 million. And again, repeating the top story tonight, KOA talk show host personality Alan Berg was shot and killed outside his home tonight in downtown Denver. Forecast for Denver tonight? Look for a low around 53 right now. It's at 68 degrees at the KOA Satellite News Center. CBS News, I'm Carol Pazewski. A marathon overnight Senate session has ended with victories for President Reagan's Central American policies. I'm Carol Pazewski, CBS News. Now, KOA's Ken Hamblin. KOA time, 11.05. And <clears throat> with me in the studio right now is KOA's news director, <sighs> Mark Warren. And um, standing by on the hotline is Paul McGregor. And um, Mark? Ken, is, uh, Paul has just arrived on the scene. And uh, let's, uh, let's get a live report uh, from Paul McGregor at the scene at uh, 1400 Adams. Paul, can you hear us? Yes, I can hear you. Go, um, go ahead. Uh, I, I've been here about 15 or 20 minutes. Police are still pretty tight-mouthed about uh, the situation. Uh, they are busy canvassing the neighborhood right now, trying to find witnesses to uh, what happened here about an hour ago. Uh, they have also called for a Chinese interpreter. They aren't saying for what reason, whether it's to talk to a witness or, you know, who knows what uh, they haven't told us. Uh, they will be telling us in a little while. Bill Buckley, who's uh, an assistant uh, district attorney, deputy district attorney for City and County of Denver, is also at the scene, as is the coroner. Uh, it, looks as, uh, it, it looked as if Alan had just stepped out of his car right in front of his... Uh, his apartment. Uh, he was driving his little Volkswagen today when we saw him, and that was the car that uh, where his where he's, his body is near. And uh, uh, witnesses uh, purportedly have told police the the only witnesses that we've heard of told police that they had heard uh, tires scream about the time the shots were fired. There were uh, a number of shots in rapid succession. Uh, police did find about uh, between eight and eleven shell shell casings lying on the ground near Allen's car, uh, which would indicate that uh, it was some sort of an automatic weapon, although the police haven't said exactly what it was. But as we said, uh, there's very little known uh, here as to what happened. Uh, Allen apparently just arriving home in his car, stepping out of his automobile, and, uh, and was gone down. Uh, they have not moved the body yet and will probably not move it until all of the forensic laboratory people have had uh, an opportunity to go over the crime scene thoroughly. Well, in, in, the, uh, in the normal course uh, of an investigation such as this, uh, surrounding a person who routinely got death threats, uh, it'll be a procedure now to go into those records, especially of the most uh, recent threats on, on Alan's life, uh, perhaps to, uh, to follow up on, on possible leads. Uh, that, that is true, Mark. Uh, it, 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 there, there could be a clue to, to who uh, the murderer is uh, in the recent threats and the records that uh, we have at the station and the police might have, but then again, uh, they, they, there may not be. Uh, Alan was constantly joking about the threats that were made on his life. Uh, uh, I don't really know how seriously he took them. Uh, maybe he did, uh, but he never appeared to on the surface. Um, Paul, <clears throat> um, has, it, has anyone been able to gain access to Alan's house? No, no only the police. All right. Uh, are they aware of the fact that he does have a pet? Uh, I'm sure they do. And I'm sure that they have talked with neighbors in the apartment building. And I'm, I'm sure they're quite aware of that. They, they will be going in Allen's apartment and going through that as well to, to see if they can find anything there that might, uh, might help uh, further their investigation. Is there, do we have an indication as to what time this took place? Uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, Ken, it happened somewhere about 10 o'clock, uh, just a little before 10 o'clock. So it's been just over an hour ago when it occurred. And you say the body, Allen, is still there? Yeah, they, they, in, in the normal course of an investigation, they... They will not move the body for uh, quite a long time. That's to allow uh, the police to go thoroughly over the area and over uh, to see that they've not disturbed any evidence to the crime, and uh, they'll take pictures and uh, all that sort of thing, and then, and then the coroner will take the body away. All right, Paul, thank you. Uh, and if you would uh, tell Mark, I, I, uh, just to put me on hold, I need to talk with him uh, in just a minute, too. Okay, we'll do that, Paul. Ken, Ken, the first uh, reports that we had uh, from the scene were that uh, the shells that were found near the body were, were forty-five caliber shells. 
Yeah. Um, well, the first reports I heard were that there were a series, series of shells, but 45 caliber shells probably point to an older automatic right. weapon. Um, the, if you want to talk trend in, in handguns, uh, the <clears throat> more popular weapon to be used now is a ten is a nine millimeter automatic weapon. Mm -hmm. So, so this is an older weapon, um, and I don't know how much easier that will be to trace or, or any other such thing. Now, the other thing is that finding shells near Allen's body um, and then the screeching of tires says to me that. In the classic sense, you had a hitman and a driver. It, it sounds that way right now. We we have no way of knowing for sure if that's what came down, but uh, that's what it looks like right now. Uh, Paul will stay on the scene. Uh, he will be talking with the uh, police investigators as they go into the house, and as they try to talk to uh, the people who say that they've they've heard what has happened tonight. So we'll keep you posted on that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. It's eleven eleven KOA time. Okay, we're going to go to. Are we going to? We're not going to go to CBS, are we? All right, we've got Mark Warren standing by at the scene. Um, why don't we go to them? Go to them right now. Ken, uh, we're uh, reporting now from uh, 14th and Adams. Okay, Mark, go ahead, please. Uh, we're trying to make uh, communications here as best we can tonight. Things, as you can imagine, are a little bit confusing at the scene with uh, all of the media hovering around the home of Allen Berg tonight. Uh, KOA Radio's Paul McGregor was one of the first to arrive on the scene after it was reported shortly after 10 o'clock. Paul, uh, you've just spoken with police. I uh, just talked with Bill Buckler a few minutes ago, and Bill has uh, given us about as much information as he could. In fact, uh, if you want, we'll just go ahead and uh, give you that interview we played a moment ago with Buckler. First, we asked him uh, to tell us all the police knew about uh, about what had happened. Information is pretty sketchy in that uh, uh, Mr. Berg was found on the sidewalk with what appears to be uh, numerous gunshot wounds. Uh, no definite eyewitness is known at this time. Some people were in the neighborhood and heard um, shots and heard a uh, car leaving. And at this time, the police are canvassing the neighborhood trying to find other witnesses. Uh, there was a report that a number of shell casings were found lying next to the car. Uh, could you tell us anything about how many there were and about what caliber? I don't think uh, uh, we can release the exact numbers, but there were numerous shell casings laying in the vicinity. 45 caliber. It looked like a large caliber uh, casing. I didn't examine them. The, the, the crime lab has recovered them, and they will examine them downtown to determine the exact caliber, but they looked large. But, uh, what is the police department going to do about, uh, and your department do about the numerous death threats out and got? Do you figure that may have, or is, that, is that something you're going to look into? I think it's something that has to be uh, uh, checked into uh, to determine whether he had any recent threats or any known enemies uh, voicing uh, an interest in doing him harm. Now, I've heard some various rumors among the neighbors who lived here about uh, the sound of tires screeching, leaving uh, 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 just you know, some, what it's one of the street uh, guys said uh, he heard that there was a, a guy in a fine, not nice suit out here about the time Alan was shot. Have you, have you people heard those same stories? Well, I've not heard uh, anything about a man in a suit, however. I haven't uh, uh, compared notes recently with all of the uh, detectives, and there are various people out doing things right now, so until they get together and, and uh, compare notes, uh, we won't have uh, a complete picture of what's available tonight. That is uh, Denver Deputy District Attorney Bill Buckley. We understand that uh, police tonight have uh, managed to contact uh, Alan's girlfriend, Linda McVeigh. We're told that she is in San Francisco. Uh, we just got that word uh, moments ago. Uh, Paul, were you able to uh, pick up anything else uh, when you went in there? Apparently, uh, Alan had spent the afternoon or the evening with uh, with one of his ex-wives who was in town to, uh, to meet with her attorney. He had been with her this evening and uh, had uh, just come home alone whenever the incident happened. There was uh, police have discovered no actual witnesses. As you just heard Bill Buckley say, 
they, uh, they've only talked to people who heard the shots, heard the sound of tires screeching. They did call for a Chinese interpreter out here a few minutes ago, but uh, I think that was just a talk with a possible witness. Ken, that is about all we can give you from the scene right now. The, uh, the block uh, area or so, half block area around uh, Allen's house has been cordoned off. Uh, people still uh, looking at the crime scene, police still trying to sort things out. From the scene at 14th and Adams with Paul McGregor, I'm Mark Warren, KOA News Talk 85. Thank you, Mark. Thank you very much. It's 12.02, and Rick, do you have an update or any additional uh, nothing you want to add to that? Nothing more that's already been said except uh, the report that a large caliber uh, yeah. shell casings, there was... The initial report we got, although uh, Mr. Buckley did not want to confirm what the count was, we have the uh, word is that there were ten shell, casing, sh shell casings found on the sidewalk uh, tonight, although that is still as yet an unconfirmed report. But uh, Mark is, of course, still on the scene, and we'll have more information as we can. Okay. All right. Um, 